Many important people have been associated with the Netaji disappearance mystery. These people were very well established, they are highly respected in the society, very very accomplished, they have held very important positions and have done a lot for the country in general. Normally we would expect that when these kind of people, when they talk about an issue, they would be articulate, they would explain their position, their thoughts rationally and would make their case convincing. Normally that is the case, that's what happens. But one strange exception is the Netaji matter. When this kind of people come to talk about the Netaji disappearance mystery, something happens to them. They become incoherent, they forget almost everything and their actions seem almost inexplicable. There have been a few exceptions like H.V. Kamath, like Samar Guha, but in general, otherwise, the big names that you would see involved in this case, they fit into this pattern. A few weeks ago, I had told you the story of Bengal's former Chief Minister, Prafulla Chandra Sen. And before that, the story of Devan Sen. While Prafulla Chandra Sen forgot everything when he appeared as a witness in front of the Khosla Commission, Devan Sen couldn't appear in front of the Commission. He had passed away just before that. But his story was brought to the Commission's notice where he claimed that he had met Netaji at the Marseille airport in 1946. And he was not alone. He had another political leader with him, K. N. Joglekar. One of the persons who supported Devan Sen's story in front of the Khusla Commission was a very important person. One of those persons whom I described at the very beginning. His name was Chapalakantha Bhattacharya. Now, let me give you the profile of Chapalakantha Bhattacharya because almost none of you would have heard his name unless you are an elderly person listening to this video. Chapalakanta Bhattacharya was the editor of Bengal's most widely read Bengali newspaper, Ananda Bazar Patrika. Incidentally, in my previous video, which is in Bangla, I talked about an article published in the Desh magazine, the Desh Patrika, which is a publication of the Ananda Bazar group, ridiculing the admiration of Netaji in Bengal and sarcastically predicting that by the time of Netaji's birth centenary, he would turn into a new avatar. That article published in the Desh Patrika was completely ridiculing and taunting the Bengali society for admiring Netaji. Those who understand Bangla would have seen that video. Those who don't, I'm sorry, because the article was written in Bangla, I had to do it in Bangla. I couldn't have translated that long Bangla article into English or Hindi and then talk about it. It takes a lot of time. Now, in this episode, I am going to talk about a former editor of the Anand Bazar Patrika. One might think that I am focusing on Anand Bazar group, but that is not so. And this is a very important anecdote, which needs to be told. It's just coincidence. But before I go into the details of today's story, here's the routine appeal to you for support. My own UPI ID was not working for some time, but it is now sorted out. It is working. So here's the number and the UPI ID where you can contribute. Your support is absolutely critical. And that is what keeps me going to take this case to its closure. Your support matters more than you can imagine. So I look forward to your support. Now back to the story. Now, who was Chapalakanta Bhattacharya? As I said, he was the editor of the Anand Bazar Patrika from 1944 to 1959. After that, he became a member of parliament. But apart from that, he was also a member of the Calcutta University's Senate, Syndicate and the Academic Council. And later on, he became the Dean of Journalism also. Incidentally, Bhattacharya also knew Subhash Chandra Bose very closely from the childhood. When he was a school student, Subhash Bose had moved to Kolkata from Katak and he was studying in the college, First Presidency and then Scottish Church. Chapalakanta Bhattacharya knew Subhash Bose very well from that time and later on became quite close to the Bose family. He claimed that for the entire time that Subhash Bose was in India before he left for Germany in 1941, Bhattacharya was quite close to him. Not only to him, but also to Sarat Chandra Bose, Suvas Bose's elder brother. So now just think about the profile of this person, an editor of such an important newspaper for so many years, one and a half decades almost, holding such important positions in the Calcutta University, a reputed journalist himself, and a member of parliament. You would expect a person like that to be logical, rational, and make sense when he says something. But when he started talking in front of the Khosla Commission, a completely different picture came out. One part of his deposition was defending Devan Sen's story, where Bhattacharya said that before announcing his experience in a press conference, Devan Sen had confided to him 
personally. And on this matter, Bhattacharya completely trusted Devansen. And he said it in as many words that Devansen was a person who knew Netaji so well that he could not have made a mistake in identifying him. Somebody else might have, but not Devansen. But then he started recounting another story which was his own. And that was mind boggling and absolutely made no sense. In short, his story was this that when he was the editor of Anand Bazar Patrika, after the partition of India, one afternoon when he was sitting in his office around 1 pm, he remembered the time. Although he could not remember the date, forget the date, he could not even remember the exact year. First, he said it was sometime after the partition of India. Then he said it was either 1948 or 1949. So he had completely forgotten the date and the year. After listening to the story, you decide whether that's a plausible claim at all. Now, when he was sitting in his office in the afternoon, Bhattacharya claimed that two people came to meet him. He was sitting, he heard the sound of wooden sandals, chappals, walking towards his office. He looked up and he saw two young people standing in front of him. One of them was a sannyasi, another person was from the armed forces. The sannyasi was in the garb of a proper sannyasi with ash on his body and hep forehead, carrying a deer skin and all other accessories that you expect a sannyasi to carry. And the other person was in full military attire but without any badges. Both of them were very young. According to his estimate, the sannyasi was around 23 or 24 years of age and the military officer was around 27 or 28. Now, these are not the regular kind of visitors that you get in a newspaper office. So, Bhattacharya was naturally taken aback, one can understand. So, he asked them who they were and why were they in his office. Oh, and incidentally, both of them were Bengalis. They were talking in fluent Bengali. The sannyasi told Bhattacharya that they were coming from Japan. They had taken a flight from Japan, had landed in the Damdam airport, the Calcutta airport, and came straight to meet with Bhattacharya because they were carrying an important message from Netaji, which they were supposed to deliver to him. Now, Bhattacharya was skeptical. He asked them, how do I know that what you are telling me is the truth? That it is really Netaji who has sent you and that you are really carrying a message from him. The Sannyasi told him that we can prove it. We are also carrying a letter which has his signature. Bhattacharya told him that show me his signature in that letter and the date. That would be sufficient to convince me that Netaji has sent a message through you. But the Sannyasi told him, no, we can't show you the letter. The letter is meant to be delivered to Sarat Chandra Bose. It is not to be shown to you. In response, Bhattacharya told them that, oh, well, if you can't show me the letter, if you can't show me his signature or the date of the letter, I don't want to see the content, but I want to see these two. But if you can't show these to me, I have nothing to hear from you. I don't want to extend this conversation. You come back to me when you can prove that you have come from Netaji. So there ended the conversation and these two people left his office. Assuming that this incident took place in 1948 or 1949, when there was so much controversy around the plane crash story, whether Netaji was alive or not. Bhattacharya, the editor of such an important newspaper, receives two young guys who claim that they have come from Netaji. Well, you might believe or you might not believe, but at least you would want to know what the message is. You would have that much of curiosity, a common person would have. Let alone an experienced journalist and to top that an editor of a newspaper. He did not even bother to ask what the message was. And that is not where it ends. Bhattacharya was told that these two people were carrying a letter for Sarat Chandra Bose. Bhattacharya never bothered to cross-check with Sarat Chandra Bose whether they had gone to meet him, whether they had delivered the letter, whether Sarat Bose met these two people. Sarat Chandra Bose was alive for one and a half more years. In that one and a half years, Chapalakanta Bhattacharya could not find time or did not have that kind of interest to go and check with Sarat Chandra Bose. Can you believe it? And he also never spoke about this in public. Why? He was asked this question. His answer was that there was already so much controversy. And if he spoke out in public about this, there would be additional conjectures. There would be more controversy. He wanted to avoid that. Chalo, even if you accept that argument, 
the question still remains that why did he not speak up at the shanwas committee anand bazar patrika was covering the shanwas committee proceedings and he was still the editor of the newspaper at that time so one wonders why he did not go to the shanwas committee and tell his story there so this is what i meant when i said at the beginning of this video that even the most educated well established accomplished person something happens to them when they start talking about netaji when it comes to the issue of netaji which cannot be explained by any reason by any logic and this question still bothers me that why did he go and tell khosla this kind of a story which had no head or no tail khosla exploited this opportunity like in other cases also where people came and told him some fantastic stories khosla blew them out of proportion highlighted them and made a point that people are emotional about netaji so they come and talk rubbish they give nonsensical stories nobody asked that why would such an accomplished person give such a nonsensical story i have no answer it is beyond me hence this thought occurred to me and it has disturbed me quite a bit that was this a deliberate ploy to distract to demonstrate that people were telling fantastic imaginary hallucinatory stories about netaji i don't know but how could such a well accomplished journalist behave in that manner i still haven't been able to figure out that's all for today i will come back very soon with more fascinating stories stories that you are likely not to have heard ever before and stories that will make you think till then jai hind